Jose, how are you doing today? Good, Mike. No, I'm great, actually. Yeah. Feeling great today. So what's up? What, are you, what, what brings you over here today? We're actually here to help out with the Fireworks Stand for this great organization that has, been, has done wonders for me. Uh, not just me and my family and other vets, actually. Uh, you know, just trying to give back a little bit to other vets as well. I appreciate that because uh, that's how it works, you know? That's how it works. And I remember I remember when you first came in. You want to tell us a little bit about what was going on with you when we first met? Uh, when we first met, I actually came with Regal and uh, one of another veterans that's in the organization. And he basically told me, you know what? There's, there's an organization that can help out veterans that's here for them. You can find camaraderie. So I came, I met you at the time. I was still, I uh, had just gotten out of, uh, I think it was uh, like a two, it was actually like a week lockup or whatever in the, what we call the padded rooms. Uh, I was at the VA for about a week or so. They had me upstairs tied up. I couldn't, I was under therapy for speech therapy, I was doing occupational therapy, physical therapy, chiropractic care, I was getting injections at the time as well. And that's when I came to see you and at the time, I, I everything was so dysfunctional that I couldn't even barely hold my head up, I couldn't even, I could barely talk to anyone. I wouldn't even have the self-esteem or even the, the confidence in me to even stand up and even talk to anybody or address anyone. I remember you had that vertical problem uh, where uh, you were looking down. You had to look down and you would, you would fall. And, uh, you know, you guys, it's unbelievable the, the amount of things that, that I've learned from you. From you and other vets about, uh, you know, things that I, I wish I could... Maybe this is part of what we're trying to do with your videos, is to educate the public a little bit, you know, because they don't really quite know it. Challenging it is, you know, uh, particularly in the beginning. Particularly in the beginning, uh, the challenges that you guys. Uh, so. Uh, oh yeah, many, many challenges. To be honest with you, uh, because of the VA, it almost took them a year to actually give me any rating. Uh, it took literally a year, and they only gave me a 30 percent. And then I was homeless for a while. Uh, I didn't have, you know, I've, we lived in our car for basically almost a year. My wife and I didn't have any kids at the time. Uh, and then this organization came out and you know what, it, it was a blessing to, you know, give me a second chance of life because who would actually give anybody, anybody for just any reason, $200. I know they did that for a month, you did the 18 month thing. And my God, since the day that I came to the foundation, my life changed, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I became a little bit more motivated to go into to the VA. I actually got out of homelessness. I went through the HUD Bash program, uh, got a voucher, which is a Section 8, it's a partnership with the VA and uh, Section 8. Got a voucher, uh, did that for about four, five, uh, four years actually, four years I was in HUD Bash. I came to the organization, I try to help out as much as we can, and during that time I try to educate myself, you know, by seeing other veterans and participating in some of the events like Morcholo, we had another place by, I remember it was like a hamburger stand that we used to we go used to. to. Go to fabulous, yeah. Uh, yeah, fabulous burgers. Yeah, fabulous burgers. Long Beach and have lunches yeah. over there. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. and and it's like uh, it's wonderful because uh, you know I, I haven't had that in a long time. I get to meet other people, and to include yourself, you're a wonderful person. I mean, I have much admir admirability towards you, and God, ah, that brought up my self confidence. So then, after I had four years in there, I decided to educate myself. I ended up getting five uh, associate's degree and through the motivation from here. I do have two bachelor's degrees, and then ultimately. I actually have an MBA with an uh, emphasis on finance. I do have a couple of minors, but I got a chance. I'm like, God, I never thought I would even have that's a chance to even that's educate. Pretty, that's pretty amazing. Four you years know, after yeah. I, I, I ended up leaving, I mean, four, after four years of getting HUD Vash, then I ended up buying a house through the VA loan. Uh, people at the VA were just tremendous. The West LA VA just opened up the doors. With your guidance, with your stuff has motivated me to do much more than I would ever dreamed of. I wouldn't have dreamed of five, eight, nine years ago. And I would it's have hard, never. Sometimes it's hard to imagine when you're down there that you, uh, but your story is what people need to hear. You know, because these vets, uh, particularly the ones that are suffering deeply with uh, 
post-traumatic stress and depression and isolation, you know, they, 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 um, they have a hard time believing that it's possible for them uh, to get out. So they, they need to hear it from guys like you that have been there, that have been in that uh, dark place because it's pretty dark. I can tell you for yeah. one year, I couldn't, I don't remember what happened one year. For over three months, I didn't leave my house. I was in my mom's house for about three months. I stopped driving. They wanted, DMV wanted to suspend my license because I wasn't driving and I couldn't drive because of the TBI, the whole thing, all that stuff. That's when they had all the diagnoses. They were still testing me with medication to see which one's good, which one's gonna not be that good. So it, it was, I mean, it, it's hard times. It, it, it basically almost took me two years to even learn how to drive again. I had to relearn how to drive. It got to the point where I would be driving and all of a sudden the streets would turn into sand. I had so many flashbacks it, that's like, I mean, I just go anywhere and it's be like, I, my nieces and nephews were very supportive. My mom was very supportive to, for me to start out from there to the post office from my mom's house, it was probably about five miles from there. And, it, and it's like, I would even get lost. I literally would even get lost. And, and then from there, I went to the VA in downtown. So I started driving, but always with someone. And, and then my, and I set each goal, and every like four or five months, I would set a goal, and I would try to match that. And, and I, I got the initiative, honestly, because of the foundation, because of the camaraderie, because of the things that I miss. And, and I know, I don't know, I don't know how too much to explain it, but, I don't know, just the, the foundation itself, the brotherhood, the, the thing that comes down in the understanding and the no criticism, they're like, oh no, you're not, there's nothing wrong with you because there's nothing physically wrong with you. It's like, people don't really know and what they had said, the invisible wounds, that does there's, exist. There's a, there's a little magic that happens when the guys get together, you know? Hey, let me ask you a question. How, um, what, how were you injured? I mean, you served, were, 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 tell me a little bit about your service. Well, I was an infantryman. I was part of the 3rd ID. Uh, I served two and a half years in Iraq. Uh, I was blown up in three different occasions. I had two IEDs, and then I had a mortar round about 25 feet in front of me. Uh, one of those, I actually was unconscious for a few minutes. Uh, during that specific time, I woke up. I got in, I basically, I mean, our vehicle got hit, got disabled. We were in a firefight. I didn't know what was going on. I realized that my gunner had flew, I don't know how many feet. Uh, and then my my uh, my driver was actually kind of tore up. Like he couldn't even, he had shrapnel coming out of his abdomen. It was just horrific. So at that time, I didn't know what to do. And I just saw people getting, just shooting. And I got up on the 50 cal. I started shooting. I, they told me I ended up disabling three vehicles. And then I probably got about, because they started ambushing us, it might have been like five or ten guys or whatever insurgents that I was able to get. I got my guys out of the Humvee while the other, while we eventually got control, called radio communications, dragged them to the other Humvees, the, the other, the other uh, three guys, while I was doing it to myself, and then I got in the other Humvees. We took off because uh, Q, Q, R, Q, uh, <laughs> uh, QRF. I'm sorry, QRF was going to take about 45 minutes. So as soon as, uh, the last thing I remember is we went to, when we coming in the base, we were about to clear our weapons and I fell. And like literally, and I don't remember till like the next day. And it's and bits are still kind of, kind of worry, kind of blurry and stuff like that. Uh, you know, you're my hero, but <laughs> I got to tell you the truth. You know, not, not just because of that, but because of, uh, what you've done with your life since then, because I know that you're uh, you're now working for the VA. You're upwardly mobile. You'll probably end up in uh, in management, uh, high management, and that's exactly what we need. We need people uh, that have a passion to help the vets, and, and nobody can uh, do that as good as those that have experienced uh, the highs and the lows. Definitely. And particularly uh, that they can convey to younger uh, vets that it is possible to climb out of that hole. And I think that's the strongest message that anybody can get, is that, you know, lead by example, 
and tell them your story and let them know that it is possible. Because a lot of these guys, sometimes it's it's hard. It's a hard work. And listen, I want to thank you. I want to thank you so much for being part of our group, for making our foundation better. Um, you're an inspiration. You know, I've been. Uh, I'm trying to do these videos in order to educate uh, the public. And uh, I mean, frankly, I want people when they look at. Uh, Wounded Heroes of America, you know, that the spokesperson are you guys. We don't we don't have any fancy spokespersons. The only people that we got speaking in our behalf are the guys that have been through this through this uh, foundation with us. So for that I thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it.